Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here. I have been working like mad uh, on something that I think you guys are gonna love, but uh, that's for another video because it's quite a project and it's taking longer than I anticipated. So right now I need to cool off because I'm pretty much soaked. It's only about 1130 here and it's already like 95 degrees. So I thought, you know what, let's go in and hang out with the Badiger and the Fly Rivers and give them some Fluker's treats. And let's catch up with these guys because in just a little while, I gotta get the Fly River Turtle out of here and we're gonna bring it to a new home uh, for someone that we all know and love who's contributed to the amazing backyard that I have here. Of course, we're talking about the pond guy. But in this episode, we're gonna get in here, take a look at everyone, make sure everyone's doing really well. And uh, as you can see, one of the male badigers is waiting for me to throw this food in. So why don't we go ahead and get this going and get underneath and see how these turtles are doing as well as the cichlids. So we're hanging out in the pond today, cause it's hot. How cool, I just get in and there's the fly river turtle already swimming up to the camera. These guys are getting more and more used to me, which is good. Um, I want these guys to be a little bit more uh, friendly and used to me being around. And this actually looks like the turtle that will be heading down to Chicago to go live at Aqualand, which is gonna be really cool. And uh, again, here is one of the Badiger males enjoying his meal. Just a beautiful turtle. Um, hoping I could get some babies out of this female. We gotta get this female out so you guys can see her. But these guys love their fluker food, as do all the cichlids. Look at them. Everybody is just doing awesome out here. So very good stuff. Let's go ahead and see what else we can find in the pond today as we look for their inhabitants. So here's the male badiger. This guy is awesome. And you can see, not shy at all. Cruising by, we have two males in here. I can tell them apart because of that algae, that circular algae on his shell. So cool. So cool. I got that other male out and now he's exploring. And uh, I wanted him to know that there's food out here. And then just as I was getting him out, the Fly River, one of the Fly Rivers passed by. Awesome. Here's Big Mama, the big female Badiger. She is awesome.
Here comes this big female. She is about 85 pounds at last weigh-in, and this turtle can easily grow to be about 100 pounds. The cool thing about these bad girafinis is they lay their eggs on the same beaches that sea turtles lay their eggs. They swim out into the ocean, crawl up on these beaches, lay their eggs, and then their young will hatch, crawl into the ocean, and then make their way up the mouth of the river and then join the adults in a freshwater habitat. That's why these guys are called the Royal River Terrapin, because they can live in salt and fresh water, but spend most of the time in the brackish estuaries along their range, which is in Southeast Asia and into Indonesia. These guys, as you can tell, are huge, so that makes them a very attractive animal for the pet and food trade. Mostly the food trade where these animals are fished out and their meat is used in all kinds of different foods. It's unfortunate because as we know, turtles take a long time to mature and they don't actually uh, get uh, to reproductive size until they're kind of old. Hey, that Fly River Turtle keeps on showing up for us. I think Greg is gonna freak out when he sees this. He's a turtle guy after all. And if you ask me, keeping Fly River Turtles is just something magical. They've got those flippers. It's like having a freshwater sea turtle. And they've got so much personality in their faces. Those pig-like noses, those noses there are actually really good at sniffing out a treat. Hey, look, there's the other guy. They're the two medium-sized ones. I still have to find that one big sucker. Where are they going to go? Oh, boy, it looks like they're going to swim right on past me. How cool. Right underneath me. And one more. But look at that face. Those noses probe through the mud, and they look for all kinds of things to eat. These guys are omnivores. They're gonna eat fruits and vegetables and plant life as well as some animal matter. Looks like we gotta get out back into the main pond and see what's going on. So many cichlids. It is incredible just how prolific these guys have become in this habitat. Look at how he swims. And there's the badiger. We still gotta find that big fly river turtle. I like to lay eyes on all of the turtles in the pond so that I know everybody is doing well. So I get to do these little, <laughs> I get to do a little peekaboo with a pig nose, but I get to do these little health assessments. And this habitat is so stable now with all the plant life and fish and bacteria that are breaking down everything, as well as the microbes that are living in here. It provides a very healthy habitat for these turtles in here. So pleased with this. It's almost like we're in the Northern Territory, watching these guys in nature. He is gone. They can really get moving. It's so cool to follow around these Fly River turtles. Um, it's, it's really amazing. It is like having a sea turtle uh, in fresh water. The way they propel themselves through the water is exactly like a sea turtle. And uh, they are a little bit skittish. They're not, they're not exactly fans of uh, this large mammal hanging around in their environment. But what's really cool is chasing them into the cave, they actually decided to dart underneath me uh, out of the cave, which is really neat. And then I had a chance to really find one. And it actually is the one that's gonna go to Greg. You'll notice it's got some scratches on the outer edge of its shell, a few scratches on its shell, and that's because I've got three fly rivers in here. They're all males. They can be quite aggressive uh, to other cage, uh, other cage mates. So for whatever reason, that one seems to be the one that kind of is getting the scratches. So I thought it would be a good idea to move that to a facility where he'll be the only one. Uh, it'll be kept very nicely. And maybe some of you that live in the Chicagoland area will be able to come visit it at Aqualand, which I think is going to be really awesome. So good stuff there. And of course, the Badiger, my gosh, the Badiger just doing really well. I love the fact that they're, uh, you know, so at ease with me. Uh, the female, you can see how big she is and how beautiful she just moves across the uh, bottom of the pond. Now, she has been laying eggs for me in the last couple of years, but unfortunately, she's been depositing them in the water. 
what I need to do is I need to create a beach type situation. Maybe that'll be a cool project for Ed or some of the Aquascape guys to come down on and advise me on how can we make a little beach entry with some beach sand that this female can go ahead, get on out of the water, pull herself up and deposit her eggs on land because it would be amazing to have uh, Badiger affinis eggs, the Royal River Terrapin hatched here at Camp Kennan, uh, highly threatened species. So if we can do that, it would make me very happy to see her, um, you know, having her generations to come, like her progeny uh, being born here at Camp Kennan, hatched out here. Uh, and of course, we've got cichlids. Uh, they are multiplying, got them from Angel's Hatchery down in Homestead, Florida. Uh, these guys are great. Lots of different rockfish, Mbuna, um, you know, we've got the Frontosa floating around in here, the Electric Blues. Uh, it's just been a glorious uh, explosion of color. And I'm colorblind, and I can still see all these incredible variety of colors and cichlids in the back pond. They do very well out here in South Florida. We run well water during the winter to keep these animals uh, warm or comfortable. With the turtles, if it gets really, really cold for an extended period of time, I pull the turtles out, they go in tubs, into the warehouse where I keep it heated. So they might have to spend a week out of their lives uh, in some tubs, but it's better than being chilly, isn't it? This male batter definitely doesn't mind. So very cool stuff hanging out here in the backyard. There's that frontosa right there. Beautiful banded fish. Uh, I really love it. And it's just uh, amazing, you know? Uh, all the foliage has been taking off around the pond. I've had to trim it back. If you guys have seen that, I've had to trim back. But I've been noticing a lot of basilisks have been finding their way uh, to live around the pond because, as you know, they love to live around the water. So really, really cool animals are making their way around here. Uh, I haven't seen the water snakes in a little bit. I'm sure they're still here. But uh, I haven't actually been looking for them. So I don't know where they are. But uh, overall, the pond is looking good. We had, um, you know, when I get in here, I stir it up and all that debris and detritus gets lifted up and out and over the uh, back waterfall into the filtration where it gets broken down uh, by a series of, you know, mechanical and uh, chemical situations, but naturally occurring chemicals. Like we're talking bacteria. They chemically break it down and digest the detritus. And uh, of course, the wetland filter, uh, the plants up there, just been going nuts for all that really good nutrients uh, and organic waste. But I love it here. It's really nice having it. I'll tell you what, folks, why don't I go ahead, dive underneath and see what else is happening. Uh, we, we found the two fly roos. There is one more in here. So we're gonna go under and have a look.
All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. We got to see the final fly river who was hiding out underneath the log. This turtle loves to hide under that log. And uh, he's much bigger than you can see as I get next to him. You can really see how big this guy is. Uh, so really awesome that I have this. And sometimes I, you know, forget that I have this amazing interactive environment just in the back of my yard and I can actually get in and swim with my animals and check on them and make sure they're healthy. Uh, so uh, just really grateful and thankful and looking forward to heading up to Aquascape soon. Uh, I will be there and uh, be hanging out uh, at Aqualand uh, and delivering Greg a very special present. Uh, so good stuff, everyone. All right, listen, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. If you enjoy seeing this and these type of videos, let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you think of the pond. How's it looking? Uh, what should I do? Should I do the beach? Uh, I would love to know from you guys. Maybe you can uh, pester Ed the Pond Professor on his YouTube channel and uh, see if we can get him down here this winter to help me out with a beach for the Batagra Finnis so we can get some babies out of these guys. That would be a real cool thing to have happen. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys again real soon. I'm Kenan. I'm saying see you later. I'm going to stay in the pond a little bit longer because it's still hot out. See you guys.